it occurs to me It takes young people like you and me To save our community if we agree To just stay at home I'm Lucy Lurgy. Hello, I'm Barney Brack. What a busy week we've had of all homeschool, work and crack. Episode 3 is full of fun ideas, projects too, all sent to lucybarneylb at gmail.com. We've so much to get through. So buckle up. And here we go. Egypt's first to see, followed by some snow stuff and trip Ryan Letter Kenny. St. Bridget is an Irish saint we celebrate each spring. There's poems, songs, stories, and maths if that's your thing. Learn to play an instrument, bake, or build a fort. There's so much more to learning. So come on, all aboard! Hey, Queen of Lucy. I'm the great pharaoh, King Tutankhamen. What? are you talking about? Let's take a virtual tour of just some of the amazing projects on the ancient Egyptians that everyone in third class made at homeschool. Warning, these facts are not for the faint-hearted. Ooh, sounds scary. The Pyramid of Giza was built roughly around 2550 to 2490 BC. It's sinking into the sand. It's so special. It's special because it's the largest in the world um, and it was built as a tomb for King Khufu. called the Boy King because he was only nine years old when he took the throne in ancient Egypt. He was only 19 years old when he died. His tomb was discovered in 1922 by archaeologist Howard Carter. It contained a solid gold coffin which held the remains of King Tut and over 5,000 priceless treasures, which are the golden throne, jewelry, a crown, pottery and a solid gold burial mask.
Here is my drawing of Tutankhamun, the young Egyptian pharaoh. An interesting fact I found out about the young prince is that he was possibly killed by a hippopotamus. Hippo hunting was the pastime of the ancient Egyptians. When Tutankhamun's dead body was found, archaeologists were shocked to find he had no heart. This was unheard of, especially for a pharaoh. This led historians to believe that he must have been badly injured when he died, which is why they linked his death to being squashed by a hippo. This is a death mask of Tutankhamun. King Tut became the king of Egypt when he was nine years old. He was known as the boy king. King Tut died at the age of 18. The, the people think that he died because a hippopotamus killed him. Ancient Egyptians believed when a person died, they would enter an afterlife where they would live in the same way that they did when they were alive. In order to do that, they would need to take everything with them. They took after eight years to remove and catalog everything into the room's tomb. Legend has it, if, any, if anyone dare, who dares to open the tomb will suffer the loss of the moon. This is a picture of a mummy the ancient Egyptians reserved. They found a way to keep it good by wrapping it in a cloth. They took out all the insides and left in the hearts since they thought the um, mummy would go into a different world near its body and its heart. project was started with the KWL Church. The Nemes hat was worn by pharaohs to hide baldness. I, I also did a mummy which I sent to you last week. And I also did um, a Lego Sphinx. But what I was really interested about was all the different gods. A sphinx is a mythological creature with the body of a lion at the head of a person. Sometimes the head was that of a god or pharaohs. The Egyptians built sphinx statues to guard important areas such as tombs and temples. The most famous sphinx of the Greeks is the great sphinx of Giza. It is one of the largest and oldest statues in the world. Uh, this is my art drawing for the for Egypt, and this, I'm going to point out everything that I drew. This is called a Sobek, and it was a crocodile that that gave you good luck if you pleased him by going past like the River Nile or like a little lake that he was standing there, and he has a little crown on because he because he was a special crocodile, and and if. And if you didn't do anything to him, and you were being annoying to him, he would do, be really violent and kill you. And this is one of the Egyptian kings standing on the sand, right, looking at both of his great sphinx here and the pyramid here. Uh, 
This, this is called the Great Sphinx, where, where it was like a pyramid that was ruled on sand and had no nose because no one really knew. And this is where, well, most people think that this is where they buried all the Egyptian kings, great, like, um, their dogs and animals. And this is a mummy standing outside the pyramid. That is my art drawing for Egypt. Thank you. Dr. Bannon, what's the coronavirus? Uh, well, the coronavirus is a little bug, uh, it's called a virus, that can make us sick. Um, and it's a very new bug, it's something that's only been around for about a year and a half. And because this bug spreads very easily, it passes from person to person very easily, it's gone the whole way around the world. Uh, now, the good news is that most of the time, uh, people who get it get better. But some people who get it can get very sick. The other good news is that when children get it, they tend to be okay. So most children don't get sick with it. How do you catch the virus? Well, the virus spreads from person to person. Uh, sometimes it's spread when we cough or when we sneeze. Sometimes we can have it on our hands and spread it to other people that way. Sometimes if we're very close to people and we're talking to them, it can make it very easy to spread as well. What are the symptoms? Okay, so when people get sick with coronavirus, they, they often get a high temperature or have a fever. And sometimes they feel a bit shivery or a bit shaky, the way you can with lots of other illnesses. People often get a cough. And sometimes they feel a little bit out of breath or a bit breathless. And sometimes they can have a change in the way they smell or the way food tastes. And they're the main symptoms. Sometimes people feel tired, they have a headache or have a sore throat. Now, some people, when they get it, don't feel too bad at all. They don't really feel that unwell. Um, but for most people, it's a fever, a cough, breathlessness, and then sometimes a change in smell or a change in taste. Uh, what should I do if I get the virus? Well, the most important thing is, firstly, is, is to, to look after yourself, okay? Um, so most people need to rest, stay in bed, and uh, maybe take some medicine um, and take it very easy for a few days and then they'll start to feel better. So the first thing is looking after yourself. The second thing is looking after other people because when you have the virus you don't want to spread it to anyone else. So sometimes you have to stay in a room by yourself. You have to be very careful about catching your coughs, by washing your hands, doing all those things are very important. Um, and then some people who get sick with the virus do need to go to hospital and they might need an extra bit of care and attention for, for quite a while they get over it. Uh, but for most people, the most important things are just resting up uh, the way you would when you're normally sick and then being very careful not to spread it to someone else. Now for the good news. Tell us about the vaccine. Okay, so we have some treatments for when people get sick with coronavirus. But the best way um, for us to deal with this is to give people a vaccine because that means they don't get sick at all. So a vaccine is a little injection that you get that teaches your body um, how to, to, to uh, stop the virus from making you sick, okay? How do we stay safe? Okay, so there's a few things we can do. Um, because this virus spreads from person to person, um, it's very important not to meet too many people at the moment. Um, so um, that's why people are staying at home at the moment. That's why maybe we're not meeting some friends or some family that we would like to meet. It's very important that we all don't meet too many people because it's when people meet up that the virus gets a chance to spread. Other things we can do is be very careful about washing our hands, about catching our coughs, um, and uh, staying safe that way. Um, when adults are out and about, it's very important that they wear masks. And that's why I see a lot of people wearing masks in shops now and things like that. So there are all the ways that we can stay safe and keep each other safe. When I grow up, I'm to be a doctor, what do I have to do? 
Okay, so if you want to be a, a doctor, you have to learn lots of things. You have to learn all about how the body works and all about how medicine works. All lots of different things. So it's really good to practice your learning as much as you can at school. You work really hard for your teachers. You practice really hard at home school. And the most important thing is to practice your handwriting. Because doctors are famous for having very, very, very good handwriting and always writing very neat. So remember to practice your handwriting. Okay. Hi, my name is Maeve and I'm going to be reading Leroy by Julia Donaldson. This is my little brother Leroy. When Granny sees Leroy, she says, what a sweet little boy. When Grandpa sees Leroy, he says, what a bundle of joy. But Granny and Grandpa don't know the real Leroy. The real Leroy is an annoying little boy. Leroy annoys, annoys Mum. He jumps on the table. He puts coins down the toilet. And he has a very loud voice. Sweet! 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 Leroy annoys my big sister. He fiddles with her little bottles. Leroy annoys Cat. He thinks he is, she thinks that he is too noisy. Cuddle, cuddle, cuddle! And Leroy annoys me. He scribbles on my books. He middles with my, up my toys and pops my bubbles. He spoils all my games. Yes, Leroy is a disaster. Leroy the disaster. Just sometimes, I enjoy having a little brother. I like tumbling the ab apples, apples with him. And there is one time when Leroy isn't annoying at all. When he's asleep. The end. Oh, hi, I'm Kearney. And I also go to home school with all my annoying brothers. They always keep on fighting about the Xbox, the Switch, the DS, and the Wii U. It's hard to get a moment's peace here because all my brothers are so annoying. Hello, my name is Noah. I'm going to show you how to zip up a coat today. I'm going to show you a little trick first. Put your coat backwards. Put your hand in where the holes are. Flip it around. 
And then, just put these two together. And then zip it up. If you want to take it off, zip it down. And then give it a wee push. Today I will show you how to play London Bridge on the piano. But before I show you the notes, I want to show you these. This is a treble clef. This means you play it on your right hand. The symbol beside it, the four on top of the other four, it means there's four crotchet beats in a bar. These are crotchets and this is the bar. The bar ends at the pink line. So this is a crotchet, it's just a note with a, it's filled in black. So if there is four crotchet beats in a bar, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. This is a minim. A minim is for two beats. So if there's two minims in a bar, one, two, three, four. And then this last note is a semi-brief. It's just a circle. So a semi-brief is held for four for four M beats. So if that was to be played in a bar, it was it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. Now I'll show you the notes to London Bridge. So it starts on G and you remember G is after F because of three flowers. So G with your fourth finger, A, G, F, and that's all in one bar. So it's one, two, three, four, and then the next bar is with your second finger and it's E, one, two, three, but this G with your fourth finger is a minim, so you hold it for two. So I'll just do those two bars again. So it's G, A, G, F, E, F, G, and you hold it for two. Then it's D, E, F with your first finger. D, E, F, and the F is a minim, so you hold it for two. And then with your second finger, you do E, F, G, and you hold it for two. So I'll just do that from the start, counting the bars. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then it's G, A, G, F, E, F, G, and the G's a minimum, so it's very much like the start. So you do that. And then the next part is a bit different. It's two minims in one bar. So D, one, two, G, one, two, and then it's E, one, two, and then C. So I'll put those two last lines together. So I'll call out the bars as well. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then when you put all of that together, it should sound like this. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. This is how you make lemon bars. First, you must gather all your ingredients, then measure them out. Then you have to preheat the oven and then grease and line the baking tray. So first you have to make the shortbread and you do that by mixing the butter, flour and caster sugar in a large bowl with your hands until it comes together in a dough. Then put it into a deep tray and bake for 20 minutes in the oven. While it's in the oven, you have to make the lemon filling. You do this by grating two lemons till you have approximately two tablespoons of zest then you slice a lemon in half and squeeze the juice into a measuring cup until you have one third of a cup. Then you must remove any seeds that might have fallen into the juice. And then you put that aside and you get a clean mixing bowl and whisk together eggs and sugar. And then you must whisk in the flour. And then you stir in the lemon zest and juice. And then when the shortbread has baked, pour the filling over it and put it back in the oven for another 20 to 25 minutes or until the edges of the filling are light brown. And then when you take it out, leave it to cool, sprinkle icing sugar over it and enjoy. Hello, my name is Rachel and today I'll be teaching you a magic trick. I will begin by showing you my magic trick. As you can see, there is a bottle cap on my hand and now I'm waving my hands up and down, 
putting the bottle cup in my arm, waving them up and down, and I feel something in my ear, and it is the bottle cap. I will show you how I did that trick. So you get a bottle cap, put it on your thumb, wave your thumbs up and down, and when it looks like I'm putting it in, I'm not actually, I'm cupping it, just so it looks like this. So you go this, cup it in, and you squeeze your hand really tight in, so it looks like you're holding a bottle cap. Then you say, I think I have something in my ear, and you show them bottle cap. I hope you enjoy this trick. woman I have chosen to talk about is the lady called Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker was born in 1903 in St. Louis, Missouri. Her real name was Frida Josephine MacDonald. Josephine was the first black female performer to gain worldwide fame. I was drawn to her because of my interest in acting and dancing. Miss Baker was adored by her fans. They loved that she was independent, a flapper dancer, a jazz singer, a civil rights activist, and a spy during World War II. What's not to love? She had several nicknames, such as Black Pearl and the Bronze Venus. Some of the dances she did were the turkey trot, the itch, the mess around, and the banana dance. Josephine became so famous that her hairstyling products were sold for women who wanted to copy her distinctive look. She owned a pet cheetah called Chiquita that became part of her Parisian act. Josephine's family were poor and so at the age of 14 she got a job with a group of travelling musicians. When she was 16, she was given the lead role in a show with an all-black cast, which was shown on Broadway. It was here Josephine really noticed that black performers were not being treated equally to white performers. In 1925, when she heard that there was no segregation in France, she decided to move to Paris. She was a hit and loved by the people of Paris straight away. Josephine Baker was much more than an entertainer. She was also a spy for the Allied forces during World War II. Josephine would smuggle documents for the military. She was able to do this because she always carried sheet music with her for her performances. The military were able to hide secret messages within these manuscripts, which were written in invisible ink. Thanks to her fame, officials were too busy admiring the superstar to really go through her things. Josephine was the first American to receive the French Military Award for Heroism. Not only did Josephine love animals, but she also adored children. So much so, she adopted 12. Her children were adopted from all over the world. She believed that children from different races and backgrounds could grow up together in harmony. Nach Sunya and Schnock the Bug, Nach Even in Rark, Gath Bohar is Cran Cluthe, Dach Ban and Ahan Perk. Eri Susa Fleshy, Imigi Yev Lesh Tivamoy, Jen Sport is Spree is Kinuer, Kurgi Glender, and Workry. Nak Ali Majin Schnarte Brontanus O'Hirna J. Eg Muscle Suis Shan Kuni Kurigi Falcha Heg and Lay. Comfort in the blanket of freshly fallen snow. How beautiful, how soothing is the sight. Every lane fades in treetop, covered in a veil, a carpet of white, 
Waking up quickly, children, away you go outside. Make memories to last a lifetime. Build, play, slip and slide. How precious is this lovely snow morning. A gift from God above. As fondly we remember and embrace these days with love. Let's go find everyone! It's snow time! Oh, we're gonna build a snowman in the snow Listen to our winter wrap. The day is cloudy and the wind is bold. Dress up warmly, you mustn't get cold. Put on your coat and zip it up tight. Put on your left boot, put on your right. Put on your scarf and put on your hat. Put on your mittens and clap, clap, clap. Go outside and play, play, play. Come in again and then we'll say, Take off your coat that was zipped up tight. Take off your left boot, take off your right. Take off your scarf, take off your hat, take off your mittens and take a nap. Let's see how many different ways you can tap out the rhythm. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Use something in the kitchen, something in the sitting room, something from the toy room, something from the bedroom. Are you ready? Let's play. Snow, snow. Winter snow, 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 winter snow. Ta is one syllable, tt two syllables. Can you think of any other one syllable and two syllable words to put into the rhythm? I've got one. Brack. Brack, lurgy, brack, 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 lurgy, brack. Now you try it. Have fun. Hi, it's Kiva again, and today I'll be teaching you two new chords, E minor and A. E minor is a pretty simple chord, and this is how to do it. You get your pointer finger and you put it on the second string, and your middle finger and you put it on the one under that. And then when you're finished, you get a sound that's like this. And now I'm going to teach you how to do A. For A, you put your finger on the third string, your middle finger on the one after that, and your and then your ring finger on the one after that. It's really easy, and it goes like this. <laughs> 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 
Thank you so much for listening to me. Ek shuls na kilcha, na chalin an achtra e. Tagalor wadi le folam, in sha in agaj kuig ke. Lurgy Brack School is just one of many learning the history of Letter Kenny. Centuries of facts and myths and lore. Here is our local historian to tell us more. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Barney. My name is Kieran Kelly from the Letterkenny Historical Society, and I'm going to tell you all about the Market Square in Letterkenny and the Boyds of Balamacool in a couple of videos. Hope you enjoy. Have you ever noticed this large orange coloured house in Balamacool Town Park? It is almost 250 years old and it was once the home of the Boyd family. Three brothers, John, William and Robert Boyd, came to Letterkenny in the 1660s from Kilmarnock in Scotland, with John Boyd building the family mansion on the main street in the year 1672, approximately in the area across the road from the Yellow Pepper. John Boyd's great-grandson, also called John Boyd, he bought the land at Ballamacool in 1783 and built a new mansion on the grounds there. Ballamacool was now to be the new official residence of the Boyd family. His grandson was a man called John Robert Boyd and it was him that erected a town clock for Letterkenny at the Market Square in the 1850s, which stood for almost 100 years. During the Irish Civil War, a group of anti-treaty IRA forces occupied both Rock Hill House across the river and Ballamacool House in 1921. The Boyds were ordered to leave the house within a few minutes and told never to return. Following this scary experience, the Boyds left for England and in 1938 the Ballamacool estate was sold to the Kelly family and the 300 year era of the Boyds of Ballamacool and Letterkenny was no more. Over the years since, the house has fallen into disrepair while around it a housing estate and a new town park was built. A very famous person, Patty Boyd, is descended from the Boyds of Ballamacool. She was married to a famous musician called George Harrison, one of the Beatles, and then later to another famous musician called Eric Clapton. Two very famous songs, Something by the Beatles and Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton, were written about her, and her ancestors live in this house in Letterkenny. everyone, today we're going to be looking at time and telling the time using only the hour hand on the analogue clock. First we will learn about o'clock and then we will learn about half past. As you can see on the clock there are two hands. The short red hand is the hour hand and the long blue hand is the minute hand. In this video today, we're going to focus on the short red hand, which is the hour hand. On the clock, you can see the numbers from 1 right the way through to the number 12. These are the hours. We are used to seeing number lines all the time in maths, and although the clock is round, it is really just a number line. Before we look at the hours on the analogue clock, we're going to look at them on a straight number line. As you can see, I've placed the short red hand under the number 3. This tells me that it's 3 o'clock. I have now moved the hour hand to under the number 5. This tells me that it is 5 o'clock. To show 9 o'clock, I have moved the hour hand under the number 9. 
When we reach the number 12, we do not carry on to 13, 14, 15. It goes back to number 1. This is why the clock is round. If we look at the hours on the clock, it is no different to tell in the hour than on the straight number line. Here is an example. If I point the short red hand to the number 3, this tells me that it is 3 o'clock. If I move the short red hand to the number 5, this tells me that it is 5 o'clock. Now we're going to look at how to tell the time when it is half past the hour. As you can see, the hour hand is now between 2 and 3. It is halfway between 2 and 3. And on a number, a normal number line, we would say that this is 2 and a half. But when we're talking about time, we call it half past 2. It's halfway between 2 and 3. Now let's put the hour hand on the clock. It is between 2 and 3. This tells me that it's half past 2. If we look at the straight number line again, we can see that the hour hand is between 9 and 10. It is halfway between 9 and 10. This tells us that it is half past 9. I have now moved the hour hand between 11 and 12. This tells us that it is half past 11. The hour hand is halfway between 11 and 12. This tells us that it's half past. Let's look at these examples on the analog clock. Here we have our hour hand. It's halfway between 9 and 10. It has gone past 9. This tells us that it's half past 9. I have now moved the hour hand between 11 and 12. The hour hand has gone past the 11. This tells us that it's half past 11. Why don't you have a go making your own analog clock with the hour hand either on the clock face itself or on a straight number line. Here are some challenges for the senior students telling the time using either the hour hand or the minute hand on the clock. You can pause the video to read the questions and to find the answers. My Shiv. Try this little breathing activity. If you are feeling overwhelmed, stressed, or you just want to relax, try the following exercise for a few minutes. It might help. Breathe in while counting to four. Pretend you are smelling a flower. Then breathe out while counting to six. Pretend you are blowing bubbles. Lala Vrija Banaha. Go again, Erwin Linya. Buskazi were good sila. Leggy, you sack Vrija Banaha. Sita Baha, Sita Baha, Sita Baha. A Vrija Banaha, Nifa. Mom, why did I have to do that? And why are you making crosses out of grass? It's not grass, Mofata. 
It's rushes, and exactly what St. Bridget used to make the Holy Cross many years ago to show a pagan king all about Christianity. Now, every year, in most rural parts of Ireland, the youngest child of the family dresses up like you did, with a shawl over her head, and as a symbolic way of welcoming the blessings of St. Bridget into our homes. But why? Well, St. Bridget's feast day is on your birthday, Bridgetta, and that's why you are called after your granny Bridie. Our big day is the 1st of February, and every year in Ireland we celebrate the life and legend of St. Bridget herself. Will you tell us the story, Mum? Of course. Listen. Long, long ago, in Ireland, Bridget was a Christian goddess. Wasn't she a pagan goddess? Well, yes and no. I'm confused. Well, back in 432, after St. Patrick came to preach about God in Ireland, the country was very divided. There were kings who were in charge of kingdoms, and they had chieftains who were in charge of regions within the kingdoms. The chieftains were in charge of all the people, and even had slaves. Some chieftains had heard about God and became Christians, but other chieftains still hadn't got converted, believing instead in the old pagan gods of mythology, such as the sun, the moon, magic and the like. Is that bad? Not at all. It was just a changing time in our land, and some of the old traditions and stories got mixed up with the new Christian ones, which is where we get the term legend. Lots of the stories were true, but like any story, different versions were handed down from generation to generation all these years later. So we have many stories to remind us of what life was like in the past. So the story of St. Bridget is true? Of course. Back in 450 AD, about 18 years after St. Patrick began preaching in Ireland, there was a pagan chieftain called Dufthak. Hi. I'm a mighty and powerful chieftain. My name is Ducha. I'm the wife. Ducha had a slave called Broca, who was expecting a baby. But Duta's wife didn't like Broca. No, she sent her away to the druid, a pagan magician. I'm a druid. I like to make spells and create magic, but I cannot seem to get Broca's baby girl to drink or eat. What shall I do to sustain her? Please eat something, baby Bridget. You are such a beautiful little girl. I need you to grow up big and strong. Please, Drew, help us. There's nothing I can do, but... Hold on, what is this? White cow with the red ears is magic. Bridget is drinking the milk. Thanks be to the sun, or maybe the moon. Years passed and Bridget became more and more beautiful. However, when she was just 10 years old, her mother passed away and the druid sent her back to her father's castle. Dovta was really, really happy to have his daughter back, but she was not only beautiful, unfortunately, she was generous and kind and loving and giving with the greatest heart in all the land. Sounds just like me. Wait, what's unfortunate about that? Bridget was far too generous. With her father's wealth, she gave away anything that anyone wanted to, well, to anyone who wanted it. And her dad went mad. Exactly. He couldn't risk becoming poor, so he brought his beautiful daughter to the king to see if he could keep her at his castle. However, as he was standing in front of the king discussing the situation, a beggar came up to Bridget. Please, miss, I have a family. We have wings. No job, no money, no food. We're starving. Please, miss, can you help us? Please? Oh, well, I, I wish I could. I know. Here, sir. Take this and perhaps sell it. You can make enough money to feed your family for a lifetime. Oh, thank you, miss. Yes, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Have a lovely life. Bridget, suffer in sunlight. What have you done now? 
My sword, my precious jeweled sword. That's it, your majesty. You have to help me. She does this to me all the time. Stop it, Dutar. Return to your castle and leave Bridget here with me. I see merit in what she has done. In fact, I believe your child to be a child of God's. Don't tell me you're a Christian now too. That Patrick surely gets around. Here, keep her. I'm done with her. I've hardly a penny left. Good luck, Bridget. I'll miss you, but I'll not be missing any more of my valuables. So, the Christian king told Bridget all about God? Precisely. In fact, she heard Patrick preaching herself and was so devoted that she wanted to become a priest. Your Majesty, I really would like to become a priest. Ah, uh, Bridget, but you're a woman and a beautiful one. Look, sure, there's a line of men wishing to marry you and you could have your pick. Pick me! Bridget, pick me! No, no, pick me! Oh, no! But I don't want to marry any of them. Please, dear God, Take away my beauty so I can concentrate on becoming a priest. Ah, uh, Bridget, what have you done now? First, you throw away your father's wealth. Now you throw away your beauty. Right, I'll take you to meet Patrick and you can be a priest. So this is a little shamrock. One stem with three leaves. Each leaf represents part of the whole shamrock, which shows you all how God, the stem, consists of three equal parts. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Patrick was more than happy to ordain Bridget, but told her that she couldn't be a priest, but she could definitely be a nun. She was ordained a nun by St. Patrick, and immediately her beauty was restored. All she wanted to do was start a convent. Oh, I know this. It's a cloak story. Yay! I really, really want to start a convent, but I've no land. I know. I'll ask the king. Bridget, now you know I find it hard to say no to you. No, cannot give you any land for a convent. It's just too much. Ah, now, Your Majesty, what about if you just gave me as much as this cloak of mine covers? <laughs> now, that's different. Sure, you wouldn't build a chimney on that bit of cloak. Fine, fine. Spread it out there till we see. Bridget asked four friends to each hold a corner of the cloak, and she dropped to her knees to pray to God. Suddenly, the cloak began to spread out all over the field. Bridget had her land. Have the deeds now, please, Your Majesty. Well, I've seen it all now. You promised. Yes, I did. Well, then, Bridget, you can have the land, but there's one thing you and God can do for me. Anything. After all, I am kind, generous, giving and loving. Well, I have a great friend. He's a chieftain, but he's dying. Oh, that's so sad. But he's not a Christian. I've tried and tried over the years to get him to believe. But he's as tran. He'll not convert. Oh, that's just awful. I'm worried that he might die before I convince him to convert. I really want him to go to heaven. But if he doesn't believe... Oh, that's terrible! Exactly. I was thinking your charm and your beauty. It's impossible to resist. Maybe you would go and visit him and convince him to change his mind. Okay, I'm on it. Bridget headed off to the pagan chieftain's house. When she entered the house, she noticed a carpet of rushes growing beneath the chieftain's bed and was immediately inspired as to how she could successfully convert the man. Oh my, you're beautiful. What a vision. Who are you? I'm Bridget. My beauty is only a mere reflection of the beautiful love that our God has for you, not to mention the beautiful kingdom of heaven that awaits all Christians who believe. Really? Oh, tell me more. I'm listening. Here, sir, please take some water. Bridget picked up some rushes from the ground below her, and she began to weave them into a beautiful cross, telling the stories that she had learnt about herself from St. Patrick, all about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And most importantly, all about the resurrection, being newly born into the kingdom of heaven. The king died peacefully, a converted Christian, and the legend of St. Bridget has been passed down through the generations, her beauty, her belief, her generosity and her story. So that's why we make crosses? Yes, on the first day of spring, 
symbolizing the first day of new growth. And the week old and Gloria and Rolinia and all that Irish. Is that a way of respecting and remembering Bridget? Yes, Bridget. As founder of the first convent in Ireland in Kildare, as protector of cattle and calves, newborn babies, and our homes too. That is why we place a new cross in our kitchens and barns every 1st of February. La Bridja Banahadi. Happy St. Bridget's Day! St. Bridget of Ireland, help us, we pray, to be kind and loving in our work and play. To make our St. Bridget's Cross, we're going to need our rushes four elastic bands and our scissors. So we're just going to leave those to the side for one minute. So to start off, we're going to start off with a long, straight, strong rush that's going to be the centre of our cross. Okay, so we're going to start off, we're going to put another one in behind, so we've made a cross shape, and then we're going to fold it over. Okay, so we folded it to the right, and now we're going to turn it clockwise. Okay, so then the new one that we've just put on is now at the bottom. We'll do the same thing again. We'll pick up another one. We're going to fold it to the right, push it up into the centre, and then you're going to turn it clockwise again so that the new one that you've put on is now at the bottom. And keep going like that. Fold it over, push it up, and turn it clockwise. So you're always putting the new one on over the top of the one that you've just put on. So you're closing it off and you're turning it the same direction all the time. So always folding to the right and always turning it clockwise. Push it up, turn it clockwise. From behind, fold it over to the right, push it up into the centre and turn it clockwise. Okay, so we can keep going. The longer we keep going, the bigger our cross will be. So if you want to make a big cross, you're going to need lots of brushes and you're going to keep going. If you just want to make a small one, you're going to do it less. Okay, so I think we'll just keep this one small. So the last one I put on is now at the bottom. I'm going to start by putting my elastic band on this one so that will hold the cross together. So I'm going to trim it off so that they're all nice and even at the bottom. And then I'm going to put my elastic band on to hold it together. Okay, I'll go all the way around. Trim it off. Put your elastic band on. Trimming it off. Last one. And there we go. Our St. Bridget's Cross is finished, so we can push it in together. Our St. Bridget's Cross is finished. In the name of the matter, always in bed, always in spirit, me, Amen. A prayer to Saint Bridget. Pray a prayer to Saint Bridget. Bridget, you are a woman of peace. You brought harmony where there was conflict. You brought light to the darkness. You brought hope to the dark past. May the mantle of your peace over those who are troubled and anxious. And may patience be firmly rooted in our hearts and in our world. Inspire us to act justly and to reverence all God has made. Bridget, you are a voice for the wounded and the weary. Strengthen what is weak within us. Calm us into the quietness that feels and listens. May we grow each day into greater wholeness in mind, body and spirit. Amen. In Anna and Anna, always in faith, always in spirit, me. Amen. 
Slime Gafoil. We'll be back for more. We'll see you next week for episode 4. It's top shade so here to pass me your cash go here. Honey, I caught in my yanny. Don't do a dance away. Nishin in a dole way, and Nisha Shaytarta. Le <laughs> Shinner Lord, 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 Lord,